headlines. Yet another beheading of a British national by Islamic State militants and a threat to kill another hostage from the United Kingdom. Korean teen golfer Kim Hyoju wins the Avian Championship in France, clinching her first career LPGA major victory. And from South Korea's prospects to North Korea's participation, we have a preview of the 17th Inch and Asian Games kicking off this Friday. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Live from Seoul, I am Kang Tae-ri. Another beheading of a hostage by Islamic State militants. This time, the victim is 44-year-old British national David Haynes, who is in Syria to help people there displaced by the months-long conflict in the region. Our Shin Semin has more. British Prime Minister David Cameron has promised justice for murdered aid worker David Haynes. At a meeting of the government's emergency response committee on Sunday, Cameron said his murderers, those belonging to the Islamic State, were the embodiment of evil and precisely why Britain and the world needed to destroy them. They are killing and slaughtering thousands of people, Muslims, Christians, minorities across Iraq and Syria. They claim to do this in the name of Islam. That is nonsense. Islam is a religion of peace. They are not Muslims, they are monsters. The beheading of the 44-year-old aid worker has increased the pressure on Cameron to counter the IS threat. This as they've threatened to take the life of another British national, Alan Henning. The international community is circling the wagons. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott pledged on Sunday to deploy 600 troops to the Middle East to aid the U.S.-led campaign against the terrorist group. He said the first set of 200 military personnel would arrive in the United Arab Emirates in the next couple of days. In response to the latest IS video release, U.S. President Barack Obama said America would stand shoulder to shoulder with England as part of the broad coalition of nations being formed to fight the militant group. Some 40 countries, including 10 Arab states, have so far offered their support in countering the threat. U.S. officials say that some of the Arab nations have even offered to join in airstrikes against the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. Shin Semin, Arirang News. And meanwhile, South Korea's National Security Advisor Kim Guan Jin is in the U.S. for talks with his counterpart Susan Rice. And the two will discuss various issues, including providing aid to the U.S. led fight against the Islamic State group. Park Ji Won fills us in. Speaking upon his arrival in Washington for a four day trip for talks with U.S. officials. Kim Guanjin said Korea is looking at diverse ways, mostly in terms of humanitarian support, to help U.S.-led efforts to defeat Islamic State militants. Korea has already provided some 1.2 million U.S. dollars in aid for Iraqi refugees. I think Korea can look into giving some additional support. When asked about the possibility of Korea joining in military action such as logistics support, Kim said the U.S. has yet to make an official request to Seoul. During his stay, Kim will meet with his American counterpart Susan Rice and other senior U.S. officials for discussions on a wide range of issues, including North Korea and the South Korea-U.S. alliance. Regarding the postponement of the transfer of wartime operation control from the U.S. to South Korea, Kim said talks will continue at an annual defense cooperation meeting set to be held next month in Washington. Seoul hopes to postpone the transfer by some five to seven years from the currently set schedule of the end of 2015. When asked about the possibility of introducing the U.S. high-altitude missile defense system THAAD to South Korea, Kim said there have been no further discussions, nor had there been any agreement on the issue. Kim added the focus of his visit will be issues surrounding the Korean Peninsula, including North Korea's nuclear and human rights issues, as well as American detainees in the North. Kim is scheduled to return to Seoul on Wednesday. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. 
A drone, presumably from North Korea, has been discovered in waters off uh, the western side of a border island. A Seoul's Joint Chiefs of Staff says a fisherman collected the wreckage of the manless aircraft this afternoon on Pengyeongdo Island. The military says it was similar in appearance to a North Korean drone that was found in South Korea earlier this year and that an investigation has been launched to determine its purpose and the timing of its crash. 64 years ago today, the first shots were fired in one of the most important battles of the Korean War. When the Battle of Incheon ended four days later, the course of the Korean War had been altered, giving the advantage back to South Korea. To honor and reflect on those uh, who sacrificed their lives, a ceremony was held this Monday at the site of the battle. And our Kim Yeonbin was there for this report. On June 25, 1950, the Communist North launches a surprise attack. Within three days, North Korean forces have invaded Seoul, and a few days later, North Korea has the majority of the South in its grasp, with the exception of the southern port city of Busan. Weeks pass, and hopes fade, but on September 15, the Allied forces, led by General Douglas MacArthur, begin to turn the tide. Some 75,000 troops and 261 vessels launch an amphibious invasion. The Battle of Incheon, as it's known today, ends in a decisive victory for the United Nations. To commemorate the battle, a ceremony was held where it took place on Monday. More than 2,200 people attended, including Korean war veterans and government and military officials. If it wasn't for the Battle of Incheon, the Republic of Korea would not exist. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the veterans from all 63 countries. To provide a better understanding of the historic battle, soldiers from the Korean Navy and Marines stage a reenactment using Aegis Destroyer and various air and sea landing crafts. It brought back painful memories for some in attendance, who lived through the battle 64 years ago. Who knew we would partake in the Battle of Incheon? By doing so, we took back Seoul, but I would really like to be with my fallen comrades or at least see them in my dreams. As the saying goes, forgive but don't forget, this ceremony not only serves to pay respect to the fallen, but to show this generation and generations to come of how lucky they are to enjoy the freedoms they have today. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News, Incheon. It's time now for this week's Industry Insight, and today we're going to talk about the 3D printing industry. Despite some controversies and concerns that uh, this technology would be misused, it's now acknowledged as one of the key innovations of the 21st century, one that Korea, of course, is looking to expand on as well. And here is our Kim ji with more. In the beginning, it was the cool factor that early adopters recognized from 3D printing. And the early players like Stratasys, 3D Systems, and Shapeways from the U.S. and Japan's DMN were quick to cater to hobbyists and industrialists with an eye on the future. In Korea, those first in line for a 3D printer include researchers in the medical sector looking for innovative ways to treat patients. For example, a local hospital, St. Mary's Hospital of Catholic University, successfully performed an artificial joint treatment earlier this year by using 3D printing to make customized prototypes. And the hospital says it wants to try to expand the technology to make functioning organs in the future. Other large hospitals are racing to patent the three-dimensional printing technology that will be used for skull or dental implants and drug delivery agents in the human body. And, but despite these promising signs, the 3D printing technology is currently in its infant stages in Korea. Barriers like price and usability are preventing mainstream users from getting their hands on the technology. But some 3D printing companies are trying to change that. Take a look. 
3D printers are not commonly used by average consumers in Korea due to its huge price tag. The hardware sells around 2,000 U.S. dollars. In order to break down such economic barriers, 3D developer founded by its parent trading company, Mide International Trade, launched a leasing and rental program for the public. Uh, we want to lead uh, uh, more people can use the 3D printing technology because we believe this is a very good thing. It is very good good for the industrial efficiency. Also, it can help people to get their own customized product. Also, they can change people's uh, lifestyle. So, uh, in order to think to expand this new technology, we were trying to watch what is the real barrier of the market. With monthly rental fees set at 35 U.S. dollars and an option to buy at the end of a two-year contract period, the company says its printer leasing program creates easier accessibility for customers to try the new hardware. The program also assures the machine will continue to operate properly even after its purchase. The company says its customers are not limited to a specific group, but includes manufacturers of toys and jewelry, as well as R&D centers, universities, and ordinary people. Yeah, for example, we can, we can try to make my own shoes. Maybe yeah, somebody can scan my fit, and then maybe we can design. We can, we can change some, some design to make my own shoes, and then I can just print it. Another company is also trying to widen the use of 3D printers by making the hardware more easy to use for the average customer. Open Creators, the country's first startup company in the 3D printing industry, says its printer, called the Almond, is by far the easiest printer to use yet. For most people, it takes just the afternoon to get it up and running. Almond has an auto-leveling function. It checks nine points of a surface and adjusts the appropriate slope of the bed, eliminating the need for the user to manually attach any nuts and bolts. Also, there's a cooling pen that brings down the temperature of the melted material, which improves printing quality. And for consumers who are worried about looks, the Almond has both substance and style. It was awarded some of the world's most renowned design awards, including the Red Dot and Idea Awards. Open Creators said it's working toward a vision to try to create an atmosphere, a culture where every household has a 3D printer in their homes, such as appliances like TVs and vacuum cleaners. The company offers a weekly workshop open to anyone who wants to maximize the utility of its product. These efforts by the 3D printing industry are expected to open up the technology to the mainstream and pave the way for more specialized applications to become a part of our everyday lives. Kim ji Arirang News. President Park Geun-hye is determined to push through with her so-called creative economy drive. Meeting with business leaders in the country's southeastern city of Daegu today, the president said she will expand financial support to the country's small and mid-sized firms next year to 7.6 billion U.S. dollars. That's on top of another billion set aside to facilitate investment for SMEs outside of Seoul, marking an expansion of Daegu's so-called creative economy. Innovation Center. The president stressed the need to utilize creativity as a means to unleash growth and expand jobs. The Tegu Center is the first out of the government's 17 designated innovation centers to have signed agreements with a private firm. It will work with Samsung to offer counseling and financial aid for innovation driven local SMEs and ventures. For the latest in news that impacts Korea and the world, join Kang Cheri for a lively half hour that covers politics, business, international news, and much more. Live at 8 every weeknight on Arirang TV. The number of visitors from China is growing exponentially every year, and not surprisingly, the spending clout of Chinese tourists to Korea is having an overwhelmingly positive effect on the stock prices of some Korean firms in the tourism sector. Our Huang Jie has the details. 
In Seoul's bustling shopping district of Myeongdong, it's very easy to find Chinese tourists. And the ever increasing number of visitors from China is driving strong gains in tourism related shares. According to the Korea Exchange, the stock prices of 31 firms listed on the local wars whose brands are popular among the Chinese have risen 51% on average since the end of last year. Contrast that against the 1.1% gain the benchmark. Mark Cosby posted over the same period. Because of this, many Korean businesses that used to rely on domestic consumption by Koreans are eyeing these high spending customers from across the West Sea. In general, Chinese people are much wealthier than they used to be. China's gross national income per capita last year stood at over 6,700 U.S. dollars. That's more than five times higher than in 2003. And due to the popularity of Korean pop culture in China, experts say the country's spending power has a massive impact on Korean companies, particularly those in the entertainment, cosmetic and clothing industries. And with more Chinese tourists forecast to visit Korea during the upcoming Chinese holiday season early next month and the Incheon Asian Games that kick off this week, expectations are high that they'll give domestic demand in Korea a much needed boost. Huang Jie, Arirang News. In sports, the final LPGA major of the season, the 2014 Avian Championship, came to an end, and Korea's teenage golfer Kim Hyoju took home the top prize in dramatic fashion. SJ Lee has more. 19 year old Kim Hyoju is a star in the KLPGA, but after this weekend, she's a superstar in the one that counts, the LPGA. The 20th ranked Korean started off the event shooting an amazing 10 under 61 in the first round and went into the final round in the lead. Fellow Koreans Chang Hana, Ha Mi Jung, and Chen Ai Yun piled the pressure on Kim, but it was Australia's Kerry Webb, a seven time major winner, who stormed through in the back nine to take a one stroke lead going into the 18th hole. But the Korean teenager kept her composure and birdied a tough putt to put her tied for the lead. The pressure was too much for the 39-year-old Webb, who would bogey on the final hole, giving Kim the season's final tour major. I'm very happy I won. When I finished, I felt out of this world. I felt terrible when I bogeyed on the in-course par 3, but I was able to birdie on what I thought was the toughest hole, so I feel great. It might be her very first LPGA Tour major win, but given this performance, we'll be hearing a lot more about Kim Hyoju in the years to come. S.J. Lee, Arirang News. In just four days, the South Korean port city of Incheon will be filled with some of Asia's greatest athletes. They'll be here to take part in the 17th Asian Games, aiming for gold in their respective sports. Now, from South Korea's prospects to North Korea's participation, our Song ji Sun looks ahead to, the, to this event, which kicks off with an opening ceremony on this Friday. The Asian Games is Asia's biggest sports celebration. This year's 16-day event, being held in the South Korean port city of Incheon, will showcase the talents of some 10,000 athletes. North Korean athletes will be among them, and the first wave of their delegation arrived in the South last Thursday. But North Korean cheerleaders will not be making the trip. They were on hand for the Asian Games in Busan back in 2002, but are skipping this year's event after failing to reach an agreement with the South over their accommodations and expenses. Looking ahead to the competition, South Korea is aiming for a top two finish in the overall medal count for the fifth consecutive event with its eye on winning at least 90 golds. China has been a fixture atop the medal count dating all the way back to 1982 games. Preliminaries for several sports kicked off over the weekend and Team South Korea got off to a quick start. The men's football team beat Malaysia 3-0, and the women's squad trounced Thailand 5-0. If you want to catch some of the action in person, the organizing committee announced that only 20 percent of the overall tickets have been sold as of this Monday. Seats are also still available for Friday's opening ceremony, which starts at 6 p.m. For more information, visit Incheon2014ag.com. Song ji Sun, Arirang News.
An international summit of more than 30 countries has opened in Paris to address the rising threat of the Islamic State militant group. And for more, Paul Ia is joining us from the News Center. Paul, have any concrete measures come from these talks as of uh, yet? Well, ahead of the conference, Iraqi President Fawoud Massoum stressed the urgency of action against IS and called on the international community to destroy the extremist group before they spread across the Middle East. The Paris conference brought together top leaders and diplomats from around 30 nations on Monday with the aim of forming a strategy against the jihadists who have taken control of parts of northern Iraq and Syria. France has already committed to joining Britain in carrying out reconnaissance flights in support of U.S. airstrikes in the region. French President Francois Hollande warned there was no time to waste. This terrorist movement has spread across Iraq and Syria. This terrorist movement ignores borders and has the ambition to build a state. That is the threat. It is global. So there must be a global answer. Earlier, the U.N. Security Council condemned the kidding of a British aid worker, David Haynes, the third Western hostage to be brutally murdered by IS militants in less than a month. Mm. And moving on to Southeast Asia, a massive typhoon has slammed into the Philippines, forcing thousands of people in the capital city to flee to higher ground. What's the current situation there? Well, torrential rains and strong winds are said to be hitting the northern part of the country. And several towns remain severely flooded and still without power as of this Monday. National Disaster Agency officials say the tropical storm made landfall on Sunday evening with wind speeds up to 160 kilometers per hour. Local residents, especially those in the low-lying communities around Manila, were told to brace for landslides and flash floods reaching up to two meters high. The water rose very quickly. We were sleeping last night when someone shouted floods, but the water had already seeped into the house. We quickly got our belongings and tried to get the children out. Authorities say as many as 8,000 people had been affected, with the majority seeking shelter inside evacuation centers across more than a dozen provinces. An average of 20 typhoons battered the Philippines each year, mostly during the rainy season from June to October. Mm -hmm, that's true. And uh, back to Europe now, Paul. The results are out, and Sweden's central left party has claimed victory in the country's general elections. Now, this marks a major change up for the government there. What kind of political shift are we looking at? Well, the Nordic region's biggest economy has been run by the center-right party for eight years, and this election is being seen as a significant win for progressives who say voters have had enough of Stockholm's austerity measures. Sweden's center-left Social Democrat leader Stefan Löfven emerged as a victor on Sunday. However, his party fell short of a parliamentary majority. The main opposition parties had garnered nearly 44 percent of the ballot against 39 percent for the ruling coalition. Tonight, Sweden has answered that now we need a change, now we need a new path. And my most important message today is the following. I'm prepared to start looking into the possibility of forming a new government for Sweden. Waffen's next challenge will likely be a political impasse as the anti-immigration far right emerged as the third biggest party. The minority government also faces high unemployment and a potential housing bubble that threatens the country's economic stability. Mm -hmm. And finally, the fashion world is buzzing with excitement this week as leading designers are landing or have uh, descended on London to release their latest collections to the public. And it looks like a top shop major retailer is, uh, of course, a breaking new ground this time on social media. That's right, Cherry. The British fashion giant recently debuted its new spring and summer lines at the London Fashion Week event. But unlike traditional vendors, it gave online consumers a front row seat to the show. Topshop live streamed the catwalk event exclusively on social networks, Instagram and Facebook over the weekend. And then let the wave of hungry shoppers be the first to buy their latest collection on its website. The British retailer says it attracts an average of four and a half million online visitors every week amid high hopes that this latest venture will continue to boost growth. Yes, I think our customer, you know, as we know, everybody spends all their waking moments on all these new platforms, apps, gadgets, Instagram, Twitter, whatever they're doing. That's our business. Yeah. So I think that's, that's the new communication world.
The British Fashion Council says it wants all its designers to embrace innovative e-commerce systems in order to grow their international sales. Domestic purchases aren't doing too shabby either, with online clothing sales in Britain set to reach over 17.4 billion U.S. dollars this year. Mm. Charity? All right, going online, mobile and being open, that's the idea to catch up. But now, th thank you so much, Paul, for those uh, stories, and we'll see you back here in just about two hours. Hello and welcome everyone. Hope your week is off to a great start. I'm Kim Bo Kyung with the latest weather update. It was a nice and breezy day here in Seoul and similar conditions were experienced in most regions. Now this early autumn weather will continue. However, those in Gangwon-do province could get light passing sporadic showers, so an umbrella will come in handy. The big gap in temperatures from day to night will also stick around for a while, so make sure to grab a light cardigan on your ways out. Otherwise, expect a nice and breezy condition throughout the week with uh, fall showers and forecast on Wednesday and Thursday for Jeju as well as areas along the southern coast. That's all for now, but I'll be back with more updates after 10. See you then. Yes, yeah, see you then. Thank you very much, Po Young, and that will do it for this edition of Arirang News. Thanks for watching.